Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thanks for joining us today. We're looking forward to get started with our spring demo series. Uh, we've been doing this a couple different times, and uh, back by popular demand, if you will, has been um, a few topics that we're going to go through today. So today is all about resource management. When we go around and travel and really meet individuals, we start talking about project management and, and what it is to do to understand and to help these folks out. And one of the top, top things everyone's going to say is resources. Not only just people, but also, you know, items that are in shop floor, potentially uh, test rooms, all these different line items that they need to do. So today, what are we going to get started with? Uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction here. We're going to get into three or four, in this case, topics. We're going to talk about resource assignments, get into utilization, and the all-important demand tracking. Now, when we get to this, we'll talk about what this means to all of us. You know, you might have a project manager on the phone, maybe a portfolio manager, might have some different terms and definitions to different people, but we'll go through that together today. Capacity and understanding that within the tool system. Task management, really understanding what you need to do and how to manage different tasks. We're going to talk with, with Project Online today, but we're also going to show you potentially some other ways to task to track tasks within the system using some other Microsoft tools that we have out in use today. And then timesheets and approval of timesheets, and that's really where we're going to be wrapping it up and getting your questions answered. Now, throughout the day, we're using uh, Zoom here. You have a Q&A tab down the bottom. Go ahead and uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and submit them there. If you happen to be listening to this recording, because we do record all of our webcasts and definitely our demo series, you can go ahead and submit any questions you have to info at PPM Works, and we'll be sure to get back to you. So on the other end of the line, my name is Jacques Goupil uh, with PPM Works. Been using the system for over 20 years now, and really had the pleasure to work with uh, developers and marketing groups at Microsoft throughout those two decades and really have a uh, direct impact not only on the tool set, but also understanding how you, the clients and folks that use the tool every day, interact with it and what you're looking for in the future. Uh, we do a lot of speaking engagements as well, so if there's any time you need someone to come in and speak both remotely or on site, reach out. And then I always, uh, we're only as strong as the people that support us. So go ahead and reach out to us. Um, if you want to link in to, to me personally, my name is Jacques Coupil, and there will be some links later on. But you also can follow us at PPM Works. We have a lot of different sessions and free webcasts. Uh, this uh, as well, you can have PDUs. So for those that are out there with PMI that want to register professional development units, uh, you can go ahead and register those. Just reach out to us. Uh, we have those different codes. So we're really excited to put together this demo series. The team's been working hard uh, not only to get the, the key um, topics that are out there that have been driving, but also uh, putting a little different flavor on this. Um, as you can imagine, some of these topics get reused, and what we want to do is keep this fresh and definitely uh, keep this informative for you folks. So you can see all the way from March, uh, getting into the end of April, uh, spring for those folks that are in the norm northern hemisphere up here. Uh, again, we're going to get into data-driven decisions here, and I really like this next topic, and I'm not going to go too much into it, but using the tool sets that you have to collaborate uh, within your team, so making things happen and be efficient. Uh, then you're going to get into what's new. Uh, there's a lot of new features with project uh, that are coming out. Um, there's going to be even another batch that's coming out here in June. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little later. Uh, project online versus project server, we hear this a lot. You know, what's the difference between Project Server and Project Online? Uh, getting into portfolio management, again, a term that a lot of folks use in different scenarios. In this case, uh, this would all be about managing the demand intake, if you will, or project intake, and then selecting the right project. So for the portfolio managers out there, make sure you tune in for uh, the 23rd there. And then getting into project management. So every time saving, wouldn't it be great if, right, you could save 
and you put in the number here, an hour, two hours a week by doing some different tips and tricks with tool sets, but also process. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, we sure think it's great and um, definitely want to make sure that we share those with you. All right. So getting into the upcoming webcast, another uh, opportunity for some free PDUs that you have out there. Uh, every, uh, every other week here in April, we're going to be doing intake, you can see there. Um, another Teams with project sites, so leveraging that new uh, feature that's out there. And then really getting into customization of site templates. For you out there that are sort of scratching your heads on what site templates are, that's the collaboration space issues risks and documents uh, and you can actually customize those or configure those uh, within your organization so you can go ahead and make sure it's your own and also have different workflows okay so the real question we're trying to answer here today is understanding not only how our resources are impacted but how effectively or quickly can we get to the bottom of the the great question, who's doing what when, and really understanding if there are bottlenecks or folks that are overbooked, how do we quickly see that? And then what do we do from there? It's one thing to go ahead in there and see everything, to actually go in there and do. And that doing part is really critical here. All right. So we're going to hop into a couple things, resource assignments and utilization and demand tracking is the first topic here. Well, I thought we'd back up here and talk about successful uh, resource management here. And the way being there is really understanding um, how you do it. And within the tool set, there are different, a couple different ways to do this. Uh, one being the ability to go from top down. What we like to call that is uh, resource engagements with the tool. So this is where you go and say 25%, okay, of a resource across these four or five different projects. So again, we can spread it out. It's quicker, it's easier. Uh, you may only track at the project level and that's maybe where you wanna get started. So getting in there and understanding that and how to do that, we're gonna show you and talk about that today. Uh, then there's this whole, um, thought of getting in and understanding named resources versus generic. And in this case, when we say generic resources, we are talking about roles potentially, skills, um, teams, whatever it happens to be. Uh, nine times out of 10, what we hear is roles. So generic is role-based, and we're gonna have some examples and show you some of that today. Uh, and then all of our project managers, our great project managers that are on the phone today, um, and some of your peers, bottoms up scheduling. That's yes, where we have the time, where we have the techniques to go from the bottom, meaning task driven, all the way up into our schedule that rolls up into our project, which would then roll all the way up into a portfolio or program of projects. So that's sort of what we're gonna be talking. And then the last there would be you know, managing our projects and you can see that there are four steps here and if you were to do it this way you know in the planning area you go out and say hey I need 25% of a project manager on this I need 50% a developer one two three or whatever happens to be and then you can go in and do an analysis which we're going to show you about resourcing in as far as generics go don't worry about name resources now just do we have enough roles within the organization to fill what our requests are. Then we can say, hey, project managers, go, you, these are the selected projects. Go and manage these, that's step three. And then lastly is going off and running the projects, but also from a resource perspective, really managing those folks. And when we say managing, we're not only talking within the tool set, um, you know, outside the tool would really be understanding what they're working on and really trying to make it easier for them uh, to do that. So just a couple slides, uh, if you're looking at what we're doing and say, hey, that's a cool, we wanted to snap that. Again, this is gonna be recorded, reach out to us. We have the, the recording link here. This is how top-down planning works. And within the tool set, we're calling this uh, resource engagements. Uh, 
I like this slide. I'm a visual kind of learner myself. So within the tool set, I'm going to be showing you this, but just so you know, you could do a full cycle, meaning project manager goes and requests and says, hey, I would like 25% of a project manager. I would like 50% of the developer, the scenario that we've been using today. That request can come into the resource manager. The resource manager then can say, I approve or no, because I'm actually looking within the tool set at who's available and what roles are, and we don't have any availability for a project manager for that time period. So maybe we have to move the time period. Maybe we need to do something, maybe move the entire project. That's where the resource manager and the project manager can interact there. Then the project manager would commit or say yes, thumbs up, and it would go back to the project manager to say yes, you now have these roles, okay, at that level. Now you could take it even farther and say, okay, we like to have our resource managers go in there and assign named resources. Can they do that? Absolutely, same process. Blue area right in here. The blue person, the resource manager, the she or the he, would be able to come in, look at our capacity, and then say, hey, for that project manager, I'm gonna sign Alice, and Alice is gonna be the project manager at 25%. So I'm gonna show you how to do this within the tool, but I want to make sure that the scenario that we're painting, and you understand that we can go through the request, we can come in through the tool and approve that request, and then it can go back either as a generic, meaning a role in this case, or a named resource. And that's what we're going to get into. So that would be uh, top down. And when we're doing that top down, again, this is that goal. It flows through from professional to project online, or you simply could put a line right where my cursor is here and say, we don't want the project managers involved with that request. We are simply gonna start from the resource okay, manager and they are gonna get, they're gonna have the request and they're gonna create those. So I'd like to go ahead and show you this today and I'm gonna bring up our, our demo environment here. So with resource engagements, yeah, I'm just going to pop this over so we can see. And there we go. So resource engagements is an area within the tool, within Project Online. And I'll just pop that out. That you can go ahead and, again, request folks at a 25% level. Now, in this case, you can see I'm looking at months, et cetera. I can come in here and change this to whatever I want. You know, I can request days or hours, and I can also request weeks, months, et cetera, all in here. And then up here, I can also say I want to do proposed versus uh, committed, you know, in this case would be folks that are coming within the tool set. I also can change my duration and time set. So this is going to put those, uh, those, those um, time blocks um, from left to right within, within the tool set. And looks like I just refreshed here. I'll let that come back up. And as that comes back up, all these areas here, you can see that within Kieran, I have requests within each project. And over on the right-hand side, I can see that request by, uh, in this case, month. So for each month by day, I can come in here and request. Now I can see that there's um, you know, a Zulex project all the way down to uh, high water sewer replacement. And then over here, you can add whatever resource fields you want. In this case, this is just a view called engagement details. And we happen to say, hey, we would like a lead analyst. So this is that role descriptor that I can go in here and see. And I can then go ahead and match uh, based on what's here. Um, and this would just be simple as I come down through here and say, hey, we want to do, uh, in this case, uh, I think I put uh, days in here, so I can come in and say, you know, there, there's five days here. There's uh, I need ten days of my Delta water, and actually this is a drag and drop feature, so I can actually drag this down across here. And as I'm going through here and requesting, or sorry, filling these requests, um, I can see all of this information that does come in uh, for this individual, and I can go ahead and accept or send this back. Now, if I wanted to create a new request or a new engagement, I can do that as well. 
Now this would be the resource manager. In the other case, the project manager was sending us all these requests. So who, okay, do I want to request? Again, it could be uh, named resource. In this case, I'm gonna put an analyst down. What project do I want? And here pops up the list of projects that I can, I have visibility in this case. And there's that Zulex project that I'm gonna select here. What is the description? All right, so I need, um, you know, a, a, a second tier uh, BA, I can spell here, tier BA with GIS experience. And that's, you know, just sort of the description. I could add different comments in here. Uh, would be nice to uh, get Paula whatever I want. I can do a start and finish time here, uh, or I can simply let that you know fall in once I do a start, you know, just pick whatever date it is in this case, and my finish will, will um, fall in. If I wanna do work, I can actually put that in, or it's a percent units, and that's where I was talking about. We have 25% of this person, and in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and select you know maybe for a month here in this case uh, through April. And as I go ahead and put that, that in for that new engagement here under analyst here is where I'm going to go ahead and see that and it's going to go off and potentially in this case send it off to uh, once I commit it send it off to that project manager so all is good there why are we doing this what we're doing is we're showing you here that we can re get requests in in this case from uh, the different requesters here on people's time this is top-down planning and this is the ability for us to come in here now, I also said within the organization, if we have all these requests by, you know, folks, and we happen to be looking, in this case, analyst or, or project manager, in this case, here are all the requests. Before I fulfill this request, I might want to see the capacity of this. And if I select, uh, in this case, analyst or whatever it happens to be, and I go over to my, oops, to my capacity planning here, and I open this up, it says, hey, do you want to leave? I'm going to say, yep. It's no problem. And it's gonna go open up my resource capacity for my analyst in this case. Um, and you can see right here, I have my analyst and I can start to see who is available. Well, folks, if I take a look at this data, uh, this is remaining availability is above the line and, or sorry, below the line, above the lines are available and below the line is over allocated or folks that are assigned. Well, in this case, all my analysts are fully booked for you know January all the way through March. Well, I can go here and change my uh, durate, my um, selection if I need to, but this is really telling because if I go through here and look at all these assignments, I can see that I'm overbooked or over requested for an analyst. So now I can go back to my project manager and say, hey, we really need to push this out beyond this period or you know, there's chances that this isn't gonna get done. Now in the, availability, if we do have availability for these resources, then we could go in and say, okay, this particular person has availability. We can go back and make that assignment within the request. So being able to have our fingers on this data as far as resource um, engagements go, but also the utilization and availability and really getting into the information is really key uh, within this tool. Now, I know we said we could do it from within here, uh, and you can do that as well. Uh, when you go in here and you're you know, creating, first you need to create your resources just like you normally do, and then we can go into the same location and add in a resource. So this is the same scenario. We can create an analysis, start and finish, 25, 50%, whatever happens to be, and I send that off up to the resource manager. So this is the ability from a project manager to create it. We showed you where a resource manager can create it, and we showed you how to get in and take a look at the resource availability and utilization. So that is the first thing that we wanted to talk about, that top-down planning from a pers uh, perspective of getting data in the system. I wanna pause for a second. Well, why would we actually use this? What's the business case for this? Well, if we're not doing this level of task, you know, um, resourcing at the detail level, and we just want to come in and maybe even just at the uh, highest level. So we just want to come into our 
you know, phase one, and we want to make some assignments at this level or just staff at this level, you don't have to come in here and say, hey, we need an analyst at 50%, 20%, 30%. We can use the engagements across the entire project to say, on this project, I need 20 or 50%. It is very helpful. It can save you time and get to this look and feel so we can start to see our overall availability and capacity within the organization. All right, so that is the first section that we wanted to go into. The second section is going to be our resource capacity. And within resource capacity, I'm gonna actually just move this uh, right over here. So within resource capacity, we are starting to take a look at the grids and really drilling into this. So there are four or five different views that you can use within the tool set. Now some of this uh, you may have seen within the project standalone tool. Uh, some of this you might be able to see beyond, but this is that resource management. You might say, okay, I've, I've seen this. Um, what else is there? Well, I'm gonna show you a couple other things, but for those that have not seen uh, you know, these demonstrations in this, this diagram, this histogram, it's showing you stacked bars of resources, okay, here across different projects and what they're on by month. So you can slice and dice the data to really your content as you will. Now, if you wanted to do some capacity planning, that scenario that we talked about, hey, let's use resource engagements, top down load, let's follow the scenario through. We load our projects in, or load our resource engagements at the top level, not going down to the task yet, but I just wanna make sure that we're doing the right projects. So can we take a look at resources across our projects and see? And absolutely you can. In this uh, screenshot, you can actually see that we're taking a look at a resource analysis. Below the dark line there is all the projects that fell off. We could not do those because we didn't have enough resource capacity. Above the line would be how we actually can get in and take a look at those resources. So I want to go ahead and uh, you know just go in and demo you know both of those. The first area is going to be in and around our views. So what do we have here? We already showed the resource availability over here. We want to go in and show um, the, the resource utilization. A lot of folks say, hey, I need to see that stack bar chart. Again, we happen to be looking at just uh, one quarter here. Um, the time scale, all that good information, you can go ahead and change up here. I want to point out this little checkbox, include proposed bookings, and ask you, have you ever used that? Do you know what that is? In this case, that is for all, it says it proposed bookings. So in that scenario that we requested people and then they weren't committed yet, those would be proposed bookings. This thought of soft booking and hard booking or committing somebody to the organization is one, but also all of our generic resources, okay, are um, proposed, will be proposed as well. So a lot of those uh, assignments would come in through the proposed. Uh, the thresholds here, you know, um, over and under capacity, you can actually change the, that colorization when you're taking a look here. And then everyone says, hey, can we put this out to Excel and see that information? Absolutely. Uh, the other one I wanted to show you here is that one that we showed you, which was by project. So you're saying, okay, this looks good. And you say, holy cow, you got a lot going on. Yes. But what I can see quite easily is that this purple band, and if I hover over it, purple is French door. You can see that in here. If I go down you know, to my French door, then I can see, wow, this is really such a big project here. What do we have on it you know, and who's all in it? And you can see here that you know, we have some folks that are in here and we have also you know, a lot of availability, or sorry, a lot of uh, utilization that's in there. And that actually looks a little light there uh, in there. So I'll, we might have to add our proposed bookings in here and take a look here and take and see how that changes us. I'm just gonna scroll down to one of those. And you can see here that the, the numbers have increased here, not only across Delta, but every all the other examples that we were just taking a look at. 
So within our views, you now can get to see and slice and dice that information. Well, folks might say, okay, great. I've seen some of this and that's really good. We haven't seen two things. One, some more reports, which I'm gonna show you right here um, when we get to it. But I'm also wanted to talk about the uh, portfolio analysis piece um, in regards to understanding uh, what we're doing with resources. So let me show you the reports first. This is an out of the box um, content pack that Microsoft provides. And we can see right away that it's a little bit beyond resources, you know, and we can, there's a project online, a video that we have on our YouTube site that goes through each and every one of these. But today I wanna just focus in on our resources. And if I click in on the resource uh, tab there, it's gonna drill us into that actual report. And you can see here that it goes across all of our assignments. And it's you know, gonna calculate here and it comes back and you can see that we have all of our work. Okay, we have our, our up top, our different filters there. And down below, we have all of our projects, just like you saw over in the other area. But I can very quickly say, hey, I wanna see all every, just my an analyst here. I can see what they're working on for portfolio projects versus you know, basic projects. And I can start to really drill into some of this information. I can get into um, resource availability as well, uh, different graphs, some of the similar information. But why, is, again, this is pretty nice because this is a heat map and a lot of folks say, hey, I wanna see that. And if you recall, what we had is over allocations uh, through our analyst, as you can see here, and, and quite a few of our other folks within that first quarter that we were showing here. And this, my friends, is probably typical within your organization. Looking at you know, how much availability we have, looking up at the capacity line and seeing, yes, we're running close to capacity until you know, the fall time because frankly, we don't have a lot of projects that are planned out through the end of the year um, in this particular organization. So all of these tools you can definitely use. Now there's one other area that is uh, kind, of, kind of unique and. Um, it's this sort of forecast chart, and it really uses what within the tool were predicted, okay, of upcoming months, and then shows you a variance, okay, that's coming off, and that's that gray line. So, hey, there's not only a variance here, but it's projected to be on this line, but, you know, based on the data and what we've had before, there's a wide spectrum in this case of where we could be. So you can see that that could be a risk, a big risk, because if we are supposed to be down here, you know, and we have 72 hours in this case, or uh, 72, and we bump up, right, all the way up to a potential in here of 115 of the upper bound, that's dramatic difference. So why is it so great? So we might wanna go back and take a look at how our resources have been, you know, calculated and, and collected within the system and really get into understanding this. We want to see a narrower um, demand forecast bound here. And when it's nice and tight, that's predictive. And we can definitely take a look at that and understand that. Something that's wider, um, I might be a little nervous on that, okay? There's a bunch of other things in here. Uh, again, this is the content pack uh, that, that's within Power BI within Project Online. So. We are also gonna go back and talk about, and this happens to be the, the home page here. And uh, for those that are seeing a, a bunch of colorizations down here, you can actually go in and link all of your other tools that you have out here. So again, we implore you to use this as the overall hub within your organization. I'm gonna select, whoops, I'm gonna go in here and select uh, one of these portfolios. You can see that I have uh, quite a few portfolios. Uh, I wanted to start here because I wanted to talk to you, you can have project dependencies. I know we're talking resources today, but if projects have dependencies, it will impact resources and their availability, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just take one of these, um, in this case, I'm just gonna take the baseline portfolio. You can see that I have a lot of things going on here and this is demo data. So I wanted to pull up one that's gonna give us a bunch of projects, but it's also gonna give us that view that we saw. And here it is. Below the dark line here, we have everything that we can't do from a resource perspective because we just 
don't have enough resources. Everything above the green line, we can do. Well, let's back up, folks. Why are we <laughs> moving forward with only two projects when we have the potential to do, in this case, seven projects? Well, through a portfolio analysis, what you first do is you define the portfolio, what projects are in it, okay? How, how do we want this to behave? Do we wanna base the project prioritization on risk score? Do we wanna do it on a prioritization of drivers? Whatever we'd like to do. In this case, we did driver prioritization. And you can see the projects that we created over here and each of our drivers, okay, we would rank. Once we rank that, it's gonna give us a prioritization. Now, this prioritization for our portfolio is going to tell us the outcome of our resources and those constraints, or hopefully, our predicted availability of these. Now we have, you could have done this Excel prioritization with nine projects, not a problem. However, once you start getting more and more projects, it's gonna be a little harder to do that. And then the next two stages are a little bit more information for us, but getting our cost information. And if you're not looking at this and you're saying, yep, this is a resource uh, demo, and all I wanna concentrate is on resource, that's fine too. You just don't, ha you simply don't have any cost, okay, in your projects, and all the projects move forward. But if you do have cost constraints, this is where you'd come in and you'd start changing the cost here to get your different scenarios. And you can see that we've already created a bunch of different scenarios. And within each scenario, as you come in here and say, hey, I'd like the cost to be, you know, it's not 2,000, or sorry, uh, one, 2 million, it's uh, 1.5 million, and you go off and recalculate, well, the, the number of unselected projects is actually going to grow, and we're going to be able to do less. This is how you do it. You walk through there uh, within the cost. In this case, it says, hey, we actually, there's a project that we can't do it. Do you, we should force it in or force it out, and it walks right through here, which is kind of nice as far as the tool goes. Well, you could go through and you know select, hey, I want this portfolio, uh, and we would like a certain amount of projects in here. In this case, you can see that we can force in or force out projects. Also down here on the left, uh, we have that efficient frontier. So are our strategies aligned with, within our projects um, and be able to see that. And as you go through this and we move forward, you'd go say, okay, we wanna move everything through and this is that case. If we do all of our projects, we don't care about cost, we just care about resources. I go in to analyze my resources. Now, knock, knock, will I have time to do all this? Will I have the resources to do all this? In this case, no. You can see right here that a bunch fall out. And here, I can go in here and say, well, I can see that they're all stacked up here. So rather than you know start this one in September, I'm gonna move this one out to March. Well, that's nice, but how did I know that? Well, in this case, I knew the data. And if I go over to the requirements area here, I'm gonna see something similar to what we saw in the other view, but it's all within this one screen, keeping you inside the resource view. Up top, you can see red or pink in this case is over allocation. Here's that analyst that's over allocated, okay? And if I actually go down, I can see where they're over allocated, okay, down here by different project. So if I take a look, I can see that I'm stacked up here in October. Look at this, we have some availability for this project, but up top for my analyst, I'm not really free here until the June timeframe. So I'd wanna push things out till June, okay, if I want, really wanna get some of these projects done. And you can actually do iterations and save those iterations so you have those different scenarios. And when you walk into the, the portfolio team or the executive management team, you could say, hey, we made these decisions because of resource availability, et cetera. I can move all these over. I can recalculate this now, and we can see how many of those projects can we actually pull up in. Uh, and this, uh, whoops, there's this reference here. So it would actually push my project in, and I, and I would be able to see more projects here. So when I have those three or four projects, I could say, hey, I wanna save this, and I wanna go and commit these 
into our portfolio. So we took a look at resource from a resource perspective across all of potential projects, maybe that are already, so, are already in execution. Maybe we have some that we're looking to add in there. And this is really what projects should we be doing based on our resource demand, but also that forecast that's coming into the system. All right. So I, I see a few people have uh, sent over some questions. I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure I can answer all those. Uh, the first question, is this another license? No, so what I'm showing here today is all project online. So all, you can do all of this with the project online license. Uh, there are three different tiers of licenses that you need. In this case, uh, everything we showed was you could do with the Premiere, which is the, the, the big Kumbaya one, if you will. There's a project license, and then there's an essential license. So um, project online license is the key there. Uh, good question. Um, and the other question, I'm gonna to get to your other question about um, time and task management in, in just a second, because we're actually getting there. All right, so switching over to the next topic uh, and leading us into it would be task management. So we have resources, we've made assignments, we've made a marriage or couple of a resource and a task. So now we have an assignment. And how do we actually go in there and manage uh, these? It is you know, resource centric, but really, it's all about task and understanding who's assigned on what, but have, giving them the ability to see that and giving them the ability to help us status those projects. So on here, you see a, a couple different things. On the um, middle stage right here, you see a task list. We're gonna show you all that. On the right-hand side, it's more of a timesheet. Um, so if you have to add 40 hours, uh, both project and non-project, you can do that. And then on the left-hand side is really how you'd go in and create a project to get your task in the system so you can actually go in and update those project tasks as a team member. So task management, uh, folks ask a lot about task management. So I'm back in project online, folks. Left-hand side, I'm an admin, so I can see a lot of different things here. We're gonna focus in right in this work area. We're gonna talk about task and timesheets today. Uh, for task, I went into task. I am a big picture kind of guy. I told you that before. Right-hand side, I can start to see a, you know, a Gantt chart of what I'm working on. I can see the information right here. I can actually come in here and, and see you know, provide, hey, I only have four hours remaining on this task, or it's complete. Well, if I want to add in uh, literally hours, I can do that. I switch this over to the time phase, and now I have something similar to a timesheet, really. But the difference here is it's all about period. So here's my current period. These are any tasks that are coming up uh, that I need to do, or you can see here that haven't been completed. Okay, so there are tasks that are within my planning window or incomplete tasks. I can also come in and see things that are well into the future, okay, and things that are not within my planning period or, in this case, have not been started uh, within my organization. And then lastly, again, I like checkbox. We're all project managers potentially uh, on heart here, uh, at heart, Siri, here. This is where I get to see the checkboxes. What have I done, you know, and what can I get into? Now, each one of these within tasks, you can actually drill in. You know, this design document, I can see that it's new on the architect door. I can drill into here and get into the details of this. Now, this is gonna show us our task, any information that's there, I can see that. There's no history here. So if someone made task changes to it, updated, made some change, I could actually see that. It's an audit trail that happens there. And I can also come down and see, you know, who the approval approvers are and also, dependent tasks. So I get to drill into this and actually see a little bit more information if I wanted to. Now, personally, I don't ever usually go into that detail and see this. I'm coming in here and say, hey, for this time period, yep, I did you know two hours here, four hours here, et cetera. And I'm adding in, notice there are unsaved updates. I need to come in here and save my updates. And then this is where people can go forward and say, hey, I wanna send this update to my project manager. So they can either say, well, I just wanna do it for these two because it's Tuesday, 
you know, and I want to submit my time here because this project manager really needs it. Or I can wait to Friday and I can come in here and just submit all my tasks. That's one way. The other way your organization can change and say, hey, we like this task thing and we're going to do that. Or we want a true timesheet. We want to be able to see not only the project time that we're working on, but also our non-project working time. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my timesheets here. It's an older one within this demo. But now you can start to see. So let's say, you know, I have uh, some training and some administrative work on Friday that I need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put my, my eight hours in here. And then I can, you can actually see that I've been diligent and putting in some time, you know, on Monday of what I need to work. And I can actually go in and do the same through Tuesday, Wednesday. And again, this is drag and drop capable, uh, copy and paste. It's an Excel form that you have. Now, what we usually ask is not only to add in, you saw my actual, my actual hours, but actually come in here and say, hey, I only have you know 80 hours remaining. In this case, I'm done with it. I did my documentation. It's supposed to be 14 hours, 16 total. Well, I'm done, 0% complete. By putting these two numbers in, actuals plus remaining work, that is going to give us, meaning the project manager, the most information for this task. Next time, guess what's going to happen here? If I go ahead and send this all in, I can send it for my entire timesheet, or you know what, I'm just gonna send progress for these. So it's gonna go off to my project manager. This that I completed is no longer gonna show up on my timesheet. Once it's done, it falls off my timesheet. So what we did is we came in, we showed the two different areas um, that were in there. We also uh, would go in and show, um, in this case, a couple other things, and I just wanna make sure we have about 13 minutes. I want to leave some time for some questions as well. Um, but the timesheet approvals we want to talk about. And then I also want to show you other ways to get time in. Let's do, um, let's do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up this for just one second. So when we talk about timesheet approvals, Who's actually able to approve the timesheet? Well, you set that up within your organization. So as an organization, you might say, well, this person is a timesheet manager. They can approve. It usually follows your organizational chart. It might not, though. You might have uh, some other ways. Well, after you set that up, OK, you would actually, in this case, be able to submit the time. And it comes into the organization. and then the folks would actually be able to take a look and update those um, and, and view those approvals. Now the output's pretty nice. Once we get that time in, we can see different things like a, a timesheet status report, who hasn't submitted time. We can go in and take a look at you know actuals versus planned and drill into those. Uh, all this information is gonna be gathered. Why are we gathering actuals? One, typically we hear, is we want status on projects. Two, is going to be we want cost you know and we need to provide an update to our clients uh, to our executives whatever it happens to be with having everybody on the team submit status it takes the burden away from the project manager one reaching out and also removes those really arduous painful status meetings that we've all been in that we sit around a conference room and someone whether on the phone or in the room tells us what they did for two to three minutes. We're half paying attention because we're in there to be polite, but we only have 30 seconds within the, the entire hour meeting. That's what we're trying to avoid here. And by submitting the time and being able to see that information, that's really the power of the time savings. So how do approvals look? Well, you can see that I submitted you know, uh, some time here and maybe some other folks did. So again, only folks that would be approvers in this case would be able to go in and approve uh, documents. No, sorry, approve timesheets. Document approval, something different. That's within SharePoint. Uh, you can go ahead and have documents that are routed and people approve. And when I go over to my approvals area, it's gonna look uh, a little, little similar to what you folks may have guessed. 
I'll have areas for timesheets, and I'll have areas for project status if I'm a project manager. In this case, let's just knock off the project. Those projects came to me, why? Because I was the PM. And here we come, you know, they have some information. You know, these folks have submitted some tasks. I can see when they submitted it, audit trail, all that good stuff. I can come through here, say, yep, I wanna approve these. We were talking about timesheets though. So in here, I can come through and you take a look at my, my dates here are a little off, so I probably wanna reset those. Um, and I can do that by taking a look at some, when some of this data. So we have some in 2005, some 2015, 2017. Um, but if I go into this timesheet, I can actually see it. So here we go. We have you know, there's some time here, look down and I can grab all this information in and I can actually see the 10 hours that Scott has submitted by um, taking a look at this timesheet and happens to be down here on this ZZ sample. And I can say, yep, I wanna go ahead and improve that timesheet. And that information now is gonna go back into, into my tool set. Now, this is a time saver. Again, removing that status meeting that you have. I mentioned a few things. And I wanna show you a sample of this. That's a fun one, chocolate wine. Let's choose that one. So if I select these and I say, hey, these are status. I wanna take a look at these because I'm not really sure. You know, how did this affect my project? Did it move my start date? Did it move my end date? Okay, did it push some date that I really need and it's on the critical path? Well, before I accept it and before I go over into Microsoft Project and see the impact of it, what I can do is I can actually come in here and take a look at it. And you can see here that yellow line is the task that is affected. In this case, all these lines have been affected. And this blue right here are the tasks that I selected. So I can go off here and say, hey, the previous start was 411, and now the new start in this is 2021. Oh boy. Um, I'm not sure I want to accept this because we just pushed out, you know, almost two and a half years in this case. Is that okay? Is it not okay? So this is a really good example of why we might want to preview before we just blindly accept. Now, if you do want to accept, we can go in and you also have that ability. Why is this 2021? Well, okay, let's drill in on the, the task that was submitted. In this case, you can see it right here, 1300 hours or 1300 days, sorry, uh, the duration's been I can click on here, see exactly who did it, when they did it, and say, you know what? Looks like you just made a mistake. You know, you, you meant to put it, you know, in a different bucket or a different time frame. They could go ahead and resubmit it. Um, you can use the feature of denial, so I can come in here and reject it, uh, folks. I typically say, you know, communication is king or queen in this case. Make sure you're talking to people. It's much much easier giving someone a call and having them on the phone. Uh, than going through that. All right, so that is um, taking a look at approvals and looking into the time tracking and also the time tracking report that you saw there. Now we, we took a look at resource uh, capacity, we took a look at resource over uh, allocations and over allocation and the resource management. And I wanted to um, also bring up just one more area here and that's gonna be Another way that you folks can manage projects and manage tasks, if you will, within uh, the tool set. And in this case, I'm gonna pull up uh, Teams. And again, this is another tool within Microsoft Project, or sorry, Microsoft Office 365, now calling M365. And you can see that I, um, I have a bunch of information here. And if I go into this here, I have my conversations, that's good. But if I actually go right into my site in this case, it's gonna to start to look familiar. So let's start there. Here's my project site, just like I had, okay, over in my, um, let me just up, bring this up, there we go. Just like I had up over in Microsoft Project. So I can actually see the, all this information and see, hey, I have something late, project management, et cetera, all this good stuff. And I can drill into uh, my resource area. I can drill into all that. I can see both tasks and documents, issues and risk. But if I wanted to see my schedule, I can also do that. So what are we looking at? 
I have teams in here, I have a project, and then I have embedded different areas within um, project in this case, and I've put them right in here. So now I can go in here and see all my tasks, see all that information, uh, really nice to see all that uh, in one area, and I can see all of my reports if I wanted to. My Power BI is right here as I click on that. I can see tasks that come in. Now you say, huh, interesting, tasks. Well, tasks could be within the project plan, or we can have separate tasks that are out there um, outside the tool in this case. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna show you this task area because this is incorporating Planner. So Planner is a lightweight project management system. We have a, a webcast and a, an entire uh, demonstration that's been recorded. Um, so I'm gonna put up the links in a moment here that you can go through. But look at this, requirements gathering, confirm requirements. These are all the tasks that were in my project that I showed over here about 25 minutes ago, okay? And what we're doing is here is we're connecting these tasks which have resources on them, they're assigned, into a tool called Planner where I can drag and drop things, okay? I can mark complete. When I mark complete over here, it takes the status and sends it over to my project. So again, another way to have organization status without having the feel of Microsoft Project Time uh, Timesheet or that task area. This is what we call our Project to Planner integration. If you're interested in this, you know, please let us know. But again, a nice, easy way to see it. I can come in here and say, hey, I wanna see by assigned to, so I can see everything that I'm working on, demo project, a little look, the different look and feel of our projects within our organization. And I wanted to make sure that you saw that just so you could say, huh, that's uh, not only quite interesting, but I think our team might really be receptive to that rather than a Gantt chart. So again, um, please go ahead and submit your question and answers here. If you folks are on and taking a look at the recorded, you can send any information to info at PPM works all questions that you have or comments and feedback to info at PPM works and before folks start jumping off to the next meeting we wanted to thank you very much but also if you want your resource management toolkit it has some of the reports that we showed today a couple quick reference guides make sure you send that off to info at ppmworks.com now this is a to do for everybody um, I like to reach out to folks when I hear something, you know, and get a couple, you know, time-saving nuggets that are out there. So make sure that you reach out to us if you want to. We have some offers that Microsoft are giving us, you know, incentives that allow us to do some free planning services with you. So if something in here has piqued your interest, reach out to us at info at ppmworks.com. Say, hey, we're really interested in, you know, maybe it's a workshop with Power BI, maybe it's a resource management um, trial. Whatever it happens to be, let us know. Down below, go ahead and get linked in with us. If you want to get linked in with me, it's just Jacques Goupil. Uh, that was in the first slide if you're recording this. Um, go ahead and get linked in. I did have a question that says, hey, can you put the upcoming demo slides back up? Yes, I will do that right now. Here's our up dem upcoming demo series that we have. And then, since you asked, or I will show it for you, is our upcoming webinar. So if you enjoyed this one, you heard it in the recording, or if you were live today, I thank you for your time, for your participation here as well. Let us know what you wanna see. Just because it's not listed in any one of these, you know, we often do these and we can do one-offs as well. On behalf of Microsoft, the Microsoft Project Team, and all of us at PPM Works, I thank you for your joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on the next demo series or webcast. Have a great day.